Hey, Tim Sykes here. I hope you're having a good weekend, but I want to review my Friday trades. I find that no matter how much money you make or lose on any given day, it's really good to go back and review those trades. Not to say, oh, I saw all this, you know, and be like a hindsight hero, but just to review and to optimize. So don't forget to study the past, especially on weekends. A lot of you guys say, oh, the week is over. Let me just move forward. I want to be a forward thinker. Listen, the best way forward is studying the past. You get better over time. You don't feel so bad or you shouldn't feel so bad if you make mistakes. I made mistakes on Friday. I still made roughly $3,000. It's okay. So you have to be methodical in your research and your studying. Um, I got to give props to my student, Roland. I just wrote a blog post about him where he passed, uh, what was it, 100, he passed 100,000 in profits with this blog post, but now he just passed 150,000 now. And he says, look at this, this is his happy place. He's studying on the weekends. He's reviewing charts, hashtag no days off. And this is really what you need to do if you wanna be successful. This is right why I wrote this blog post on timothysykes.com on Friday. I wrote it real quick to get it out there so that you would have some homework over the weekend. If you go to timothysykes.com and read that post, you'll see some homework. There are some great free webinars, some great free videos. I want no excuse whatsoever for you guys to study. And, you know, normally or lately I've been making roughly 2000 a day. Friday I made nearly $3,000. Um, so it was a good day. Here were my trades. Um, I had a few trades. I'll go over them in a second. But I should also mention you guys need to be in the chat room more. Um, a lot of you guys think that the, the big money is just following picks. It's not. Uh, the picks are just real-time reminders of the patterns that I teach. And the commentary usually sets up, you know, potential trades where I'm watching a stock. I'm like, okay, this stock needs to, you know, get to this level or I'm watching this stock at this level um, for a potential buy or potential short. And that way you can really see my process. That's what it's all about. All of my top students don't give a crap about what I trade or the alerts. They care about how am I thinking? How did I come to this conclusion about making a trade? And so there's a lot of them. You know, I, I give a lot of commentary. This is just in the afternoon. And in the morning, I gave all this commentary too. So it's good to really help you understand the process. So please get in the chat room. It's the quickest way for me to give you real-time um, alerts and, you know, commentary and potential trades. And it's just so, so useful. We, we have over a thousand people in the chat room every day. It's pretty awesome. It's not just me. And if you're a challenge student, you get access to the challenge chat room. Tim Gratani, Mark Crook, they're giving real time alerts. They're giving real time Q&A. It's actually a fantastic chat room. Um, but now let me get to the trades real quick. So my first trade on Friday was plug. Um, this is the chart. And you can see here it's, I mean, this is a hundred day chart. You can see here that it's a multi-week breakout. The question was, could it really break this high back from April in the 260s? And I wasn't sure. Um, normally, I don't you know, buy pre-market. I don't like to trade pre-market. It's less liquid, although this stock is you know, very liquid. The whole question was, could it break 260 at the open and could it really run? We've seen this thing run, but that was years ago. You have to go back to all the way to 2014 when it really ran. The past few years, it's been tough. And this company, I mean, the chart is not that impressive, but their customers are. So they make these fuel cells. And this was the news on Friday, uh, expanded collaboration with Walmart. So when a big company like Walmart uses a small company like Plug's products, and then also Walmart is investing in Plug because, you know, theoretically, it's going to do well for this little company. So they're getting 55 million shares at an average price of 212. So this is the interesting thing. The Walmart deal, they already had it, but now this is an expanded contract, so that's a good thing. Um, it's better if it's a brand new contract because then everyone's like, whoa, this small company just got the you know, likes of Walmart supporting them. They already had Walmart, but they've expanded it. And Plug Power also has Amazon. So Plug has some really amazing, amazing clients. The problem is, is that they're kind of like this alternative energy and oil really isn't that high right now. So alternative energy stocks have had kind of a rough, uh, you know, few days, few weeks, few years even, because it's just tough for it to really, you know, spike. There's just not that much demand. Although big companies like Walmart and Amazon see the 
uh, efficiencies being created. So this is a positive press release. The bad news is 55 million shares at 212. So it's basically a big contract win on top of a financing. And, you know, the stock, I mean, it closed at 240. But before, uh, you know, the, the day opened, it was at 212. So they basically raised a lot of money right at current prices. So it's good that they did a financing at current pricing. Um, you know, that shows that they're not desperate for cash. Like a lot of these penny stocks will do a toxic financing at a 30, 40, 50% discount because they just need cash to survive. And that's actually usually a bad thing because you see, you know, based on the discount, the percentage, how bad the company needs cash to stay alive. Plug did not necessarily need it, but when you can get Walmart as an investor, you take it. And that's why the stock was up. But the question was, could it really break the 260s? And I was buying it in this mess uh, in the 240s because I was thinking, okay, you know, the deal is a net positive. Even though the financing is done at 212, I still think this stock can spike and possibly retest 260. And if you read my alert, I said I bought this oldie but goodie. So I think it can test the multi-month highs in the 260s. It's important for you guys to read my alerts too. Okay, there's a lot of chat rooms. There's a lot of traders. They just like bought XYZ and they just, you know, mention the ticker and they're like, I think it goes up. For me, it's not <laughs> if I think it goes up or down. I think it's actually laughable how most traders alert because they just want others to follow their picks. I don't want anybody following my picks. This is why I write out this whole freaking paragraph because it's, first of all, it takes me like 30 seconds to write it out. And more importantly, you see exactly what my thought process is. This is the key to becoming my next millionaire student. This is why. It's a very small detail, but this is why I have more millionaire students than other people, because I explain the process, okay? I didn't know if Plug was going to break out. I didn't know if it was even going to get up to 260. I want to show you my thesis in real time so that you can start to think the way that I think. I see some newbies and they're like, oh, I don't know much, Tim, but I know Plug is a short. Why would you short a stock that just has an expanded deal with Walmart? Okay, they had the financing. I get it. It's not purely positive. But the deal with Walmart is a net positive. And when they're within striking distance of their recent highs, if you've watched some of my recent video lessons, stocks near their highs have a tendency to test, if not break those highs. And I wasn't sure because this isn't you know a very volatile stock lately. So I specifically said, I think it can test the multi-month highs in the 260s. So nothing huge as this isn't the most volatile stock, but I'd love to make 10 to 15%. So I gave it time to try to break it. And it actually did. I got a little greedy on this one. You know, buying it around 240, selling it at 260-ish, I could have, could have, would have, should have made like two grand. But I thought, and I wanted to give it a chance to see how it could do at the open. It could not break 260. And you can see here when the market opened, I didn't even give it a real shot at 260 let alone it had trouble holding 250 so i was out it came down to the 220s it was actually a better dip buy before coming back to 250 pretty much a range bound stock but this is why i post my thoughts it's not just about the pick it's about the thesis and this is what i want you to learn this is why i want you in my chat room and really thinking and modeling my thinking because this was a good thesis even though you know i probably could have sold better in the 260s I got a little greedy because I wanted the big breakout. It's always fun to try to be the hero. And, you know, lately I've been doing 2000 a day. And I was like, well, I have nearly $2,000. This was like right before the market opened. And I was like, well, I could be done for the day. You know, 2000 that's cool. But I got greedy. And I was right that, you know, I think it could test 260, 260-ish. And it just couldn't break out. So I got out around 250 And I said, good lesson for me. So... I was right in my thesis of buying it uh, in the 240s. I was right in my thesis in thinking that it could you know, test the 260s. I was wrong for not selling it in the 260s um, because it, you know, it basically topped out. You know, and this is a, a rather nice top, uh, multi-month top, even though it did finish you know, 260, 250, 240. I mean, it's, it's not that big of a difference. It's not like it went up to 260 and then crashed. But at the same time, I want you to get in the habit of taking solid profits when stocks fail to break out big. You know, if it is going to break out big, it shouldn't have even 
you know, tested the 260s and come back down. It should have gone to the 270s, maybe even the 280s. Then you can get a Friday short squeeze up to the threes. If, so if a stock is really going to break out big, it's not going to be like a, a little minor breakout and it's not going to be, you know, topping action like this. So I got a little greedy and it cost me roughly a thousand, although I still made roughly a thousand. Next trade, um, this one was, was scary. So tier, you know, is this terrible stock, um, terrible chart and never really holds its gains. And they, they had some positive news on Friday, so I'll give them that. But on Fridays, you know, you get like these morning spikes and they usually fail. Um, so this one went from basically two up to 340. A lot of you guys went long. Props to you guys. Um, I, it spiked too quickly. I was dealing with plug and I missed this one. Um, but this one I thought could tank from, you know, this ridiculous high. Like it, this, was, this was a crazy Friday spike, huge volume. So I'm shorting it in the low uh, 330s. And I actually got a pretty good execution in here. And I was covering into this panic. But it's scary to short morning spikes. Um, a lot of you guys ask, you know, what is this pattern? If you watch my top students DVD, Tim Grittani's DVD, Trading Tickers, he talks a lot about morning spikes. And let me just pull up Trading Tickers. This is uh, Trading Tickers. And, you know, it's awesome. Some people say great, but a little outdated. A lot of you guys want like all breaking news, you know, breaking patterns. You don't want to study the past. You need to study the past, okay? Uh, I, I don't know how to break it to you, but you can't just study current patterns. It really helps to study uh, the, the past and, and how different, you know, patterns have evolved and stuff like that. Um, look at this. Like these guys are like tons of useless info on OTCs. Nothing is useless. It's all good information. Anyways, most people say that it's amazing. Um, some of you guys just, you don't get it. Um, here are the reviews, 100 plus reviews, and most of them are five stars. And I would encourage you to study everything, including the past. And if you want to know why I shorted this morning spike, this is a Tim Grittani type pattern. Um, and I covered, you know, uh, it was, it was scary. I made like what, like 20 cents a share. Um, not much as, as, as I thought that it would tank more, but I took, you know, a little profit and I like showing you different trading ideas. It actually bounced nicely. It was actually a better dip buy, um, you know, off the lows here on that, uh, dip. It actually spiked, you know, nearly a dollar a share over the course of the afternoon. Uh, but a very choppy stock. Very scary stock. Um, I'll short these, not necessarily aggressively. You know, when I was shorting it uh, at around 335, if it had broken out past the day high at 340-ish, I mean, that's my risk. So even though it's scary to short these stocks, you do have to have a predefined risk. So if I was wrong for whatever reason and it kept going, you know, I'm short at roughly 335, 337. If it goes to, let's say, 345, I'm out. And it might be quick, you know, I might have had to cut losses and lose 10 cents a share quick. But I thought that when I'm shorting this ridiculous run up, I actually thought that it would break three uh, sooner than it did. It did break three. I mean, I was shorting it right around here. It did break three about an hour after my short. Um, but it held up better than I thought it would. And this is, you know, what happens with these low flow plays on, on the first green day. So it's okay to take a little more aggressive speculative trades long and short. Just be very, very careful about the risk um, and be careful to cut losses. You know, and I said starter short, um, small position though due to risk. So I want you thinking about that before you enter a trade. Some of you guys are brand new. You don't need to take aggressive or speculative trades. Uh, but every now and then I will take a speculative trade and, you know, you have to remember, I'm a little different than most people who are trying to make a thousand or two thousand dollars a day. Whether I make a thousand or two thousand, or even fifty thousand plus or fifty thousand negative, it's really not going to affect me. I'm kind of like this crazy ten plus million dollar guy trading, like really small. So some of you guys ask me, like, aren't you scared? I like showing you different ideas, and sometimes for me, you know, as a multimillionaire trading small in order to teach. It gets a little boring. So 
I don't want to scare you. You do not have to take any speculative trades like this. You don't have to take any trades that you don't want to, that you're not comfortable with. But for me, in my place, in my experience level, and sometimes I'm just like, fuck it, you know? Like, I can do this. Like, I could have, I could take so much bigger positions. You guys don't understand. But I'm trying to put myself in the shoes of, you know, my average student where, you know, my average student, if you make $1,000, $2,000, $3,000, that's a damn good day. That's why I trade with a small account. Um, but sometimes, you know, I'm a trader. I, I've, I've made $100,000 plus, $200,000 plus in a day before. Um, so every now and then I, I yearn for it. And I have to try to control that uh, addictive gambling behavior because I don't want to show you, you know, crazy trades and, and too risky trades. But at the same time, I will give in every now and then. And that was, I'm setting you up for my last trade of the day where I made uh, roughly a thousand bucks where I'm shorting DRYS. So I had two lo or one long and two short. So DRYS is this kind of infamous stock where, you know, they've done so many reverse splits. The stock was never at 2000. Um, and if you scroll out, you know, it, it actually got up to $750,000 a share. It never got up the, this high, okay? It did do this spike back in 2016 where it went from basically five up to 100 plus. Let me pull up a chart. This is the uh, the real chart of DRYS, just in case you, you can't see it. Um, so the stock went from like five to over 100 in a few days. Each one of these candles represents a day. And then it came right back down to five after like a week. Crazy, crazy volatility back in 2016. The reason, and I'm getting a lot of questions about that, that's why I have to address it. The reason it shows 750,000 now is because they've done so many reverse splits, split after split after split to reduce the number of outstanding shares so that they're going to kind of hide the insider selling. Um, it's a joke, okay? That's that's how how far devalued the stock has been. It's It's like a... Nigerian currency where, you know, $1 equals like, you know, a billion dollars in Nigeria. Like it's, this is the kind of joke that DRYS is. And I'm sorry for picky on Nigeria or any African nation that has, you know, hyperinflation where the value of their local dollar has just dropped so much. If you go to Indonesia, um, you know, the, the value of a dollar is like 10,000 uh, Indonesian dollars. So, or Indonesian, whatever they're called. Um, just to give you an idea, the point that I'm bringing up is that this stock has spiked big in the past. And if you bring up DRYS, <coughs> excuse me, to a lot of short sellers, there's a lot of people who made a lot of money. Um, there's also a lot of people who lost a lot. And most importantly, there's a lot of people who remember this spike. And whether you made or lost money, this was one to remember. So this can spike up again very quickly on Friday. We had this, you know, classic late day Friday short squeeze where it literally went from the low ones to the high threes, all inside of like two hours. And I shorted some at Interactive Brokers in here in the threes. Some people are like, Tim, what are you doing? This is crazy. I understand that it was speculative. Read my commentary again. I said, woohoo, Interactive Brokers got me some shares to short of this junker goals to make 50 to 75 cents a downside. Small position though due to risk. So you'll see me take speculative trades like TIER and DRYS every now and then uh, when I'm feeling comfortable, when I think the market is ripe for it, uh, when I think the stock will come down in a hurry. You won't normally see me you know, do this every single day. Um, but when I do, I'll say small position though due to risk. I thought that I had only shorted uh, roughly 1,000 shares. I actually got short roughly 2,000 shares. Uh, but again, in the grand scheme of things, you know, my Interactive Brokers account is nearly a million dollars, okay? My Interactive Brokers account, I started the year with like 800,000. I'm up to like 920, 925,000. Um, trading very conservatively, but this is my bigger account, which I'll use every now and then. E-Trade was also having some execution problems at the end of this week, so it's good to have multiple brokers. I do use E-Trade and Interactive Brokers. I don't get paid by either of them. Some of you guys are like delusional and you're like, show me your IB agreement. I know this is how you make your real money. I don't make a dollar. I don't make a dime, a cent from Interactive Brokers or E-Trade. And in fact, I think most bro brokers, especially these two brokers, hate me because 
I specifically tell my students not to trade as much as they want to. So I don't make money through IB agreements with my main two brokers. Let me be very clear about that. There's a delusional trader out there who's saying like, oh, this is how these people make their money. I make my money from trading. You know, you can see I've made nearly $5 million through trading, every single trade shown transparently, which the delusional people say, oh, no real trader should ever post on social media. <laughs> where, are you, where are you gonna post? You're just gonna stay quiet and you're just gonna stay, you know, all sketchy forever? I know a lot of traders that would like that. But yes, I have made millions of dollars from trading and I do make millions of dollars from teaching, okay? I'm not ashamed of it. I'm proud of it so you know where my priorities are. This is why I trade with a small account. I don't have to make video lessons. I don't have to give real-time commentary. If I was just trading a $10 million account, I would say nothing all day. And I would probably make 20, sometimes $50,000 in a day. But when I'm trading with a smaller account, it allows me to give real-time commentary. Normally, I wouldn't bet tens, hundreds of thousands of dollars and take my eye off it the way that I do when I write commentary or answer questions in chat, just so you know. Anyway, this was a Friday afternoon short squeeze. Um, you know, if you go through all my commentary, I was just, I was like laughing at this. You know, of course DRYS is going to spike up like this on a Friday afternoon. Um, and I just put in some orders with Interactive Brokers just to see if I would even get executed. It's always interesting for me um, just to see if I can even pull off the trade, you know, because I know whether, I, again, whether I'm going to make or lose money, my priority is in teaching you. And I teach you through trades that I've done or trades that I've missed. And so I wasn't looking to short it. I wasn't looking to trade. You know, at this time, uh, I had already made my, my roughly $2,000 a day on plug and tier. Um, not that I have a goal of, of trying to make, you know, um, you know $2,000 a day. It's just sometimes it happens. I don't shut off my laptop and say, well, I made $2,000 for the day. and Let me not trade. I know some people like that. I don't think that's the right way to go. Um, I'm always just going to trade when I think that there's a good opportunity, whether my profits on the day are a thousand, two thousand, three thousand, or if I have a loss, I'm trying to make good trades and DRYS when it, you know, really got above here in the three twenties, three thirties, three forties, I was like, this is just, this is just insanity. Um, you know, so I'll, I'll start shorting a, a stock like this because I think it can come down and sure enough, it did. And I got some pretty good executions. I was shorting at Interactive Brokers um, like in the 320s, 330s, 340s, 350s, <clears throat> excuse me. And even, let me get a drink of water. Even I got some executed in the 360s. Again, just all a few, you know, 100 shares at a time, a little over 2,000 shares total. Um, and it came right down under three after a little bit of a trading halt that you have like these halts intraday just because of the volatility and they're just trying to figure out all the orders i mean this thing traded 30 plus million shares and most of it came in the afternoon so there's a lot of orders but you can see straight up and straight down this is the kind of uh price action that i wanted for tier earlier in the morning and did not get this one we got it um and interactive brokers thank you for the borrow <laughs> it was just it was kind of fun and my heart was racing and you know, I made roughly a thousand bucks. So that was cool. Um, but at the same time, this is why I love, you know, volatile penny stocks. Wait, I have a tweet somewhere. Let me pull that up. Here is my tweet Friday afternoon. Um, and this was, you know, before I shorted, uh, 140 to 320 now in 90 minutes. I love penny stocks. Retweet favorite this. If you love this kind of action too, I want to make a lot of these videos just to show you, the kinds of profit angles that are out there. So I shorted it pretty well in the mid threes and covered at around three, you know, already at like, what, another 30 minutes later, it's down to two. So I could have made a lot more. I just took a very small portion of this. Again, I'm trading not just for profits, but to show you the different angles. There's so much BS out there that says penny stock should be stayed away from, you know, this is a scam, Tim Sykes is a scam. It's not a scam. And the more times you see the different angles, whether you're buying this, I know a few of my students who actually bought the high of the day breakout. You know, the high of the day was here in the low twos and they were just buying it here. Let's say, um, who was it? Was it Eddie or George? Uh, it's 
not Eddie George. That's a football player. But Eddie or George, I, I don't know. I'm sorry. The, the, the chat was going too fast. But I know some student, one or both, um, in the challenge chat room was buying like a 1,000 shares, I think they said, um, like in the 220s. And one guy sold in the 250s, and he made like 300. And the other guy was a little more aggressive, and I think he bought it at like 230, and he sold it at three, and he made 700. So making $700 in a few minutes on a $2,300 investment. Just think about that for a second. There's not many slash any other niches that this can happen. This is a Friday short squeeze. I've gone over this a ton in my Tim Line DVD and my Tim Raw DVD. It's not based on fundamentals, so the value investors don't understand it. The value investors will look at this and they'll say, oh, this is, this is manipulation. Oh, this is, this is the devil's work. Oh, this is whatever. Shut up, you fucking value investors. You piss me off with your narrow-mindedness. This is volatility, okay? That's what this is. Whether you go long or short, or, you know, some of the best traders I know can go long and short. You trade the volatility. I don't care about DRYS. I don't care about their company. I don't care about their value. I'm not investing in them long term. For me, it's a volatility play. And when I see this madness... On a Friday afternoon, you know, I was perfectly willing to short a few thousand shares. I'm not saying go all in like this is definitely going to go down. I knew this was the top. Don't get me wrong, okay? This could have easily gone to four or even five. That's why it's so key to just trade with a few hundred or a few thousand shares on plays like this because I could have gotten out easily, okay? When I'm shorting it, I think my average was like 346 um, after all my executions. When I'm shorting it at 346, at worst, at worst, I'm going to cover when it takes out the day high at 380-ish, 390-ish, okay? And I was getting close to taking a loss, but I had such a small, small position. And for me, I've seen so many of these squeezes before come straight up and come right back down. I don't mind risking a little bit. And, you know, again, this isn't an exact science. In another, on another day, I could have easily lost money. But at the same token, whether I made or lost money on this, this is penny stock volatility, okay? DRYS was a great, you know, spiker and then dumper. TEAR had a great spike and then it made new highs, although the new highs, you know, was kind of a weak breakout because it was already up 100%. PLUG had a nice little, you know, morning curl, but it totally failed in the 260s. So these three examples are just great examples of penny stock volatility. They've all traded, you know, millions of shares. Plug traded 31 million shares. DRYS traded 36 million shares. Tier traded 20 million shares on the day. So some of you guys are like, well, like, penny stocks, I mean, what, what if the, you can't get out? I'm trading the most active, the most volatile penny stocks. These are the three stocks combined. They traded nearly 100 million shares on Friday alone. And on all of them, I'm taking a few thousand share positions. So there's plenty of volatility. There's plenty of liquidity. Uh, I, you know, did not trade tier perfectly, but there was, you know, what, off the, the peak 340 down to 280. I mean, there was 60 cents a share of downside, even though there was, you know, 80 cents a share of upside on this dip buy. DRYS from my short, I mean, there was over $1.50 a share of downside. You know, and we're talking inside of an hour. PLUG, there was 20 cents a share, roughly, of upside from my buy. I just didn't capture it all. I got a little greedy. So you can see the variations. Um, you're not always going to have this many plays all at once. Friday was a rather extraordinary day in terms of all three plays happening at once. Each play is different. Um, it's not an exact science. But on all three of them, I tried the best that I could. I went in with a plan, a uh, plug. I probably should have, could have, would have stuck to my plan a little better. Then I would have, you know, a $4,000 profit day. Um, you know, DRYS, I could have been a little more aggressive on my cover. And I could have maybe had a five or $6,000 profit day. But again, if I'm making 2000 3000 4000 5000 it's all gravy, okay? It's all just nice. I don't care the exact dollar amount. I'm trying to judge my risk. I'm trying to lock in profits. I'm trying to take singles. So this is the point of this video lesson. I hit three singles on Friday, if you like my baseball analogy. I had zero home runs, zero triples, zero doubles, 
three singles, roughly a thousand bucks a pop. And none of them were perfect. None of them were very pretty, but singles win the game in the end. So if you understand that, uh, leave a comment under this video that with just two words that say singles win. And if you don't know baseball, I suggest you study it because I make a lot of baseball analogies. But these are the three plays on Friday. I'm going to go do my watch list uh, for next week. Be sure you get in my chat room, okay? I hate when you guys miss out on this real-time commentary and you can't follow along. This stuff happens fast, okay? That's why I'm leaving commentary literally every few minutes. AEZS, I didn't even talk about that. I didn't even have time to play it. I mean, this one has been a big spiker the past few days. This is going to be volatile next week. This is going to be a good potential short for me in the coming week. And this one trades, you know, tens of millions of shares per day too. And whatever I do on it, if I do trade it, I'll take singles or I'll aim for singles because none of these plays are truly perfect where I want to be so aggressive. I like the volatility. I like the choppiness. I like trying to profit long and short. But at the same time, go in with a plan, take your single, try the best that you can. If you're wrong, you cut losses quickly. That's it for today, guys. Thank you very much. I'll see you in my chat room tomorrow.